Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today I'm here with uh, the Town Meeting TV interns. My name is Travis Washington, and we're going to be talking about the impact that news has, especially in this fast driven social age that we have, and like what it, the impact it has on the youth here in our city and also, hopefully, in society at large. So, my first question I just kind of want to do some check ins with y'all. Um, to see how you're doing and how has how has the news impacted you? I don't know so far recently um, in your lives. Let's start with Thea. Yeah. So uh, for me, recently news has kind of been like depressing, really, for like lack of a better term. A lot of like the politics going on in Washington D.C. Uh, and just all over the country with all the mass shootings have kind of been had like a negative impact on me. So lately, uh, like for my mental health and for other reasons, also just like time, I've been kind of trying to stay away from it a little bit more, but still like stay informed at the same time. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I would say kind of scary. I mean, kind of scared, not just for like students or just like for kind of like everybody, it seems to be happening everywhere. But that's what I would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty desensitized. Um, for me, it's just seeing the same things over and over, and just the fact that I'm expecting dread in the news is really sad, but as I've gained experience um, at media outlets here in Vermont, just knowing where to find my news um, and making sure that I gather information from a variety of sources has been a really big piece of this to me. How do you often, how do you often find your news? Like, Ashley, like, how do you often see, like, where do you most encounter, like, like, new news or even, like, opinion pieces? Like, how do you find that? Like, how do you find something that you want to read and are interested in? So for a long time, it was a lot of TV news. Um, but then over time, I started realizing that I didn't really see myself reflected in those stories. And so as I've gained experience um, in digital publications, kind of just realizing that there are a lot of written stories out there um, and opinion pieces that can really shape my perspective on the world. So I do a lot of reading. I will watch things from time to time, but I've definitely shifted from short news pieces that are a minute and 30 seconds that can't really tell the whole story to more longer form pieces of storytelling. So if you were going, you were finding a story that you were interested in, would you go, like, how would you hear about that story? Would it be from TV news? Would it be on social media? Would it be word of mouth? Like, how do you often just hear about news stories that you see, or do you go out searching for it? Sometimes I'll go out searching for it, but a lot of it is word of mouth and social media. If I see something, I don't immediately trust it from social media. I definitely do my dirty work to find out if it's true or not. But I don't really watch TV news as regularly as I used to. Awesome. Jeremy? I would say social media for sure. I don't watch TV news at all. But like, when I find something that somebody maybe reposted or something, then I'd go on to a website and kind of like dig deep into that. Awesome. Um, and Theo? Yeah, I've had a pretty similar experience. Usually, like social media is the first way I find out about something. Yeah, yeah. But then I also really like journalism and like paper and news publications. So if I want to kind of dive deeper into a topic and learn more about it, that's usually a good outlet for me is to read online about it. So when you see really big news stories that have a wide impact on a whole bunch of different aspects of our society, how do you normally, how do you normally handle that? And also, how does that make you like, what is your initial feeling when you first see that headline or read that news piece or hear it from a friend? What is, your, what is your initial feeling? And then, like, how do you normally go to resolve that feeling? Or what are your steps after um, you hear that? Jeremy? Um, I would say it's depending on, on whatever the headline is. Uh, like, if, if it's something uh, if, like something like completely messed up, yeah, I would, I would just kind of be depressing a little bit, and you just 
And so you like you when you see something like that, you you go on to see what other people have to say about it, and try to figure out like sort of like who's right, who's wrong, stuff like that. That's usually what I do, cause and kind of just like based what I'm feeling on that. Do you normally find that there's a right and a wrong side to most of the things, or do you normally find that it gets a lot more complicated? It definitely gets more complicated for sure. For sure, I. I don't know. Every, everybody got their thing, so like, I, I can't say who's like right or wrong, but like, everybody is just. I'm not really sure, honestly. Fair. But yeah. Ashley. Um, I guess for me, it's first finding out the hard facts. So who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, and I've always trained myself to ask, who am I going to hear from in a story? Making sure that we get that range of perspectives, whether it be with gender identity, sexual identity, um, race, ethnicity, et cetera, because I think it's really important that as media consumers that we hear from perspectives that are different from ourselves. Um, and as someone who's written a lot of stories over time, it's really been my mission to make sure that we hear from those perspectives because sometimes, you know, stories will appear differently if you're hearing from only one demographic of people versus a story that has that array of perspectives. They're two different stories. They may have that sa those same hard facts, but the story in essence is different. And um, as someone who hasn't really seen myself reflected in media, oftentimes, I'd say that's a big priority for me. Yeah, just piggybacking off of that, I th one of the things I pay attention to when I'm consuming media is the point of view. So. Uh, Maybe if somebody has an agenda based off, yeah, like the things you mentioned, gender, sexuality, but then they're also the socioeconomic status. And if they're tr they are trying to benefit from a story or change uh, a piece of legislation because of what they're saying, I'm very in tune with that and in tune with what that person is trying to say and why. How do you normally go about discovering, like, that kind of info about an article? Like, what is your process on like, or like a new source, like what is your process, if you could break that down, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, it can be a lot of different things, but one of the most important is just learning who the author is, because uh, from that you can kind of tell their background and the experiences they've had, and you can try to decide how their experiences and their background uh, impact their like view on the story. And then from like a larger media source, think about like where their funding comes from, if they're supported by any of the big organizations they're reporting on, that can be helpful. Awesome. Would would any of you ever say that reading a headline or hearing about something that happened has ever had an impact on your day-to-day -day life? Um, if so, how? If not, why do you think that? Um, let's start back with Thea. I mean, yeah, definitely. Like I mentioned previously, can have kind of like a negative mental health impact on me. So one of the things I try to do when I'm just like looking at news, looking at media, consuming it, is have that kind of distance between what I'm looking at, but then also like my personal life. So being able to put down my phone or turn off the TV so I can kind of enjoy time with my family. Ashley? I guess a headline that resonated with me, honestly, a lot of them were headlines that I have written. Um, sometimes I just develop really close connections with my stories, which isn't always a great thing when you're reporting on a lot of sad um, events, but one of them was actually for my college publication when a professor dropped a racial slur in class. Um, it happened twice. One of them was in one of the classes that I had taken. Um, and just having to write that headline, um, it definitely made me pretty sad, the fact that we're still experiencing that to this day. Um, and I definitely took a lot of heat from that story, unfortunately, um, but that is to be expected when you write about things of this topic. Um, that's just the reality for us. Jeremy? Um, like I said before, I, I, for me, it sort of depends on what I'm reading, mm -hmm. like if it's some like usually things that happen like locally near where I live and like maybe there's like a death or something mm -hmm. that would like kind of get me scared or depressed or something like that. Um, do you ever feel as if media 
and specifically news media drives that panic in your lives or do you feel like you are aware of it happening and you're just you're just taking it in and trying to understand where to move next or do you think news media consistently puts those headlines in front of you so that you can or so that you all constantly have something to like care about and something to worry about let's start with Jeremy I I would I think drive because most of the things that happen like you I don't really know about them until like I see them online and I'm like holy shit this happened like mm -hmm. I know that place and stuff and then yeah it goes from there yeah Ashley yeah, I guess for me, um, in the past, it's definitely driven a lot of fear, but as I've gained experience in the media industry, you kind of can differentiate what's a tabloid headline versus what's the real story and just knowing what goes on behind the scenes. Even though storytelling is hard and there are a lot of bad things in the world, definitely just gaining experience in the field has helped me to steer away from a lot of that fear. Yeah, I think at times with all the negativity in the news, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So uh, just trying to balance, like, learning about the things that I personally care about and staying informed while uh, not letting it have, like, too much of a negative impact for me is important. And one thing I've noticed, especially working here this summer at CCTV, is that a lot of the local news can uh, actually make me feel better because you can see the changes that you want to see in your community and you can see how your city or your town or your county is trying to improve the lives, lives of their citizens. And so that, that's a good reminder that there are like good people out there working to ch make a change for the better. Would you all say that you consume more national, international, local news? And if so, which one has like the biggest impact on how you're feeling or like, how you approach situations in your life. Um, let's start with Ashley. <laughs> so definitely national news, but I love to explore how that affects people on a local level. So if we're talking about Roe v. Wade, for example, it's a really big topic nationwide, but how is that affecting people locally? For example, we did the rally mm -hmm. um, in Burlington recently, and I just really, I really prioritize localizing news, and that's something that has always been drilled into my mind when I was at BT Digger, um, even at the college publication. It's why should people in your community care about this topic? What's going to differentiate your storytelling versus the NBC News, CBS, ABC News, et cetera? And also, how can people in your community relate to that? Why should they relate to that? Thea? Yeah, for me, I definitely focus on new, news at more of a national scale because I feel like that just has the most impact on the people I care about. So if it's a national story, if a new legislation or policy was passed in DC, I, I know that's gonna have an impact on like all my family members and all my friends around the country. I agree with that, <laughs> sure. Do you wanna add anything else, Jeremy? No. Alrighty. Um, so when you do look at local news, um, do you f ever feel like you, like Thea was mentioning that they feel a little bit better um, after looking at local news because they see the impact that at a local level, how they're trying to change their community and address situations in their community. Do you ever feel when you look at local news that that specifically or something um, the opposite, as in like, it makes you feel like even more worried about your community than before, or um, so on and so forth. Jeremy? Yeah, I, I mean, like let's say the mass shooting that happened in Texas a while ago, mm -hmm. like when, you, when I saw that, I was like, yeah, that would never happen to Vermont, mm -hmm. like, or like anything like that would never happen, like sort of like near where I live, so I wasn't too worried about that, but then like, like uh, not too long ago, I, I saw some some headline like not like on a school shooting level, but like something that happened locally was like some sort of shooting. Then that that kind of gets you, you know, You're like like that happened in Texas. Like that would never it would never be here. But like then that so that sort of stuff started happening here, and that was like it gets you more worried and stuff. So uh, let's toss it to Theo. Yeah, uh, I'd say 
like I mentioned earlier, local news has more of a positive impact on me. And one example that comes to mind is the new uh, pedestrian bridge they're trying to build over I-89. And they have a $15 million of funding for that. And even though like the route they want to take was kind of unpopular with some of the citizens of Burlington and South Burlington, it's cool to see that kind of funding being used for a project that is going to have a really positive impact on people and help make the city of Burlington more walkable and bikeable. Actually. I guess for me, um, and this is the case for many people, consuming national news can cause us to have a sense of detachment from what's happening. Um, just like what you were saying with mass shootings, it's yeah. the mentality of, oh, well, that was in Texas. That's yeah, not yeah, going to yeah. happen over here, um, which is why I always stress the importance of localizing your news, because sometimes we have a tendency to think, oh, that was far away. That's not going to happen to us. But sometimes it is happening in your areas. Um, I think about everything with BLM and the uprisings. Um, and last summer, I wrote a story about someone locally who was racially discriminated by the police. And sometimes when we're reading the big headlines, especially in 2020, we're thinking, oh, well, that happened far away. But no, in reality, it is happening in our communities and people really need to see that. Awesome. Um, so what are the like top three biggest topics you often see when you're consuming news media? And do you also think those three topics that you're inundated with all the time um, do you do you think that also corresponds with the three topics that you care most about um, or like causes or news topics that you care most about personally in your life if so if not let me know like let's start with Theo <laughs> uh, yeah I don't know if I have like a list of three mm -hmm. big events but the two that come to my mind are just kind of like whatever the su new Supreme Court rulings are, mm -hmm. obviously with the 6-3 majority, yeah. conservative majority. And then uh, recently, maybe over the, like the last 10 years, has been mass shootings. And like for me, I do care like deeply about both of those topics, but they haven't maybe had a, like a personal effect on me. So I feel like change does need to come from that news reporting. Um, but another thing with mass shootings is kind of balancing how the news media should cover them. So one thing that they've seen uh, is that when there's more media coverage of the mass shooters instead of the victims, it kind of inspires uh, the next person to do the same thing. And that can be pretty dangerous. Ashley? I guess uh, my top three topics I love features and profiles. Um, I think those are just such important local stories and unfortunately people don't always prioritize them because they want the big headline, oh this really bad thing happened, this needs to be our cover story. But what about the local farmer who just did this really awesome thing <laughs> or this new person who joined a community or this new business that just opened? People don't really value those stories, but I do. So I definitely make an effort to seek those stories. And then obviously hard news. So XYZ just happened over here. There was mass shooting here. Um, the Supreme Court ruled XYZ. Um, my hard news you know, got to stay informed with the who, what, when, where. And, you know, news analysis, too, I think could be pretty interesting. Do you, do you ever feel that, like, that news media isn't focusing enough attention on other topics you care about besides just feature stories? And, or do you also just feel like this is just also so important that it is important that we focus on it for now? Um, but I would like to get back to something, or I would like to see something else that isn't surrounded around mass shootings, Supreme Court rulings, et cetera, et cetera. I guess the celebration of culture is one thing for me. Um, I was speaking to someone in the media field recently, and he was talking about how whenever topics of race are covered in the media, it's often negative but you don't see a lot of those profile stories, those features, those celebrations of different identities, and it can definitely skew the way that people view us. So that is something that I wish I could see more in the media, definitely covering the realities of what happens in our community, not sugarcoating it, but there are also some really great things that people are overlooking. Germain, do you feel that the topics 
that the media tends to cover align with the topics that you most care about? I, I feel like um, what like the big media coverage is kind of like, sort of like what everybody should be reading, you know, because like it sort of like affects everybody in like each day or whatever. So that gets like the big attention, but obviously things that happen like locally, not many people are going to read about it because it's just the people around that area. So I guess it is what it is. Yeah. Sort of. But like, um, if there, if you were to do a local news feature story on a topic, any topic, how would you approach this subject and what would it be on? Let's start with Ashley. I guess this is the perfect timing for you to ask this um, because I'm already in the process of planning um, a studio interview. So a few months ago, I worked on a short documentary about representation in Vermont newsrooms because often as journalists, we're behind the screens, behind the cameras, but we're not really in front of it sharing our own stories, but we'll share other people's stories. So um, I allowed I gave a platform to journalists of color, um, including myself. I was in the story, um, just talking about our experiences and looking back on it, the conversation, the conversation will never be over, um, but there's definitely an opportunity to just have more thought provoking conversations as a group. So that is something that is in the works. Um, and I think it's important that people hear from journalists, period, um, because sometimes we'll detach ourselves from the stories. But in reality, just how stories are affecting media consumers, we are also media consumers too, but it's also affecting the people who are writing the stories. So definitely want to have some conversations about that. Jeremy? Wait, say that again. <laughs> um, if you were to create like a feature story, how would you approach the topic and what would you what would you cover in the topic or like in the story? I uh, haven't really thought about that, so I'm not sure. But no, I'm not really sure about that. No topics interest you or? I mean, I, uh, some local topics, some, some, some things that cool things happen around in the area, so that would be cool. Like, yeah, you recently did a piece on Juneteenth and that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly, and exactly. Would you want to see more of that in? Yeah, for like sure. News media, like like Ashley was saying, like celebrations and stuff. For sure, yeah. <laughs> that that would be that would be great. I um, some some local things, you know, just like Juneteenth and stuff like that. That would be great. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Theo. Yeah. Okay, if I could do one piece, <laughs> I would do it about um, what the city and like the state more generally is doing to improve uh, cycling and pedestrian infrastructure. Because uh, I feel like one pro uh, like one big problem with American cities is that uh, they're very car centric, mm -hmm. which makes uh, the lives of their citizens a lot worse. So if you can't afford a car, it's pretty much impossible to get around. And then also being dependent on a car is unhealthy because it doesn't give you that ability or access to like go on walks. Right. So I would want to talk to as many like city councilors and uh, like Vermont state legislative members about like what they're doing to advance this topic. And then also try to get a sense from community members in Burlington uh, about like what their thoughts on this are and if they would like to see a change in that direction. That's awesome. Um, is oftentimes when you see a topic that is um, that is, that doesn't impact you, but it impacts people that you're close with. How do you, or I guess what I'm saying is, how do you often share the news media that you have consumed? Like, do you break it down gently, or do you just link people what you're saying? Like, how, how do you normally create that um, social bubble around the news. Um, Thea? Uh, yeah, for me, just kind of talking with friends and family has been helpful to process the events in the news. And uh, talking with like adults that I look up to and that have like more knowledge and expertise in the fields of area I'm reading about has been nice. 
Yeah, asking asking people that know about the topic for sure. Like if something hap like if you see something in the news that you don't quite understand, I usually would ask somebody that might understand that better and be like, "Hey, you, did you see this? What's up with that and stuff?" What's your what's your like what's your template for going through and seeing um like finding people who to ask about that do you normally just go you too theo do you normally just go and find someone who you know is knowledgeable on the topic or do you ask around to find someone who's knowledgeable on the topic somebody, or somebody, you start the conversation there somebody who's usually knowledgeable on the topic so like if it would, it would be a topic about school and i would just i would ask somebody around my school you know or like a teacher or something and if if it's something about something else, I would ask somebody that I think knows most about that topic, depending on where they are. I guess um, it could be tempting to just link share, especially to avoid that discomfort, especially if a story affects a close friend or someone and you may not directly identify with. It might be easy to just link share, but I think conversation is really, really important. And just having that dialogue um, and yeah, so I'll read a story, maybe break it down to a friend, like, oh yeah, I read in the New York Times about X, Y, Z, um, and kind of break it down and just have some constructive dialogue about it. All right, anything else any of you want to add before we wrap up? Just kind of what your thoughts are to encapsulate them, conclude for us. Yeah, I'd say just like, for me, social media is a really important part of how I consume media because it's usually that first way I found out about a topic. And I think that's like a lot different from other generations because they didn't have that like instant exposure to events going on. Like if there's a mass shooting, probably like we would know about it like 15 minutes later. And that can, uh, that can be tough on us. Jeremy? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something that we agreed on earlier that social media is like, um, it's it's sort of what we're all on. It's kind of common, you know, and that's that's what we go on to like really on the news and stuff. So yeah. And Ashley, I guess it's understanding that features and profiles um, are not throwaway stories. For a while, it's been drilled into my mind that oh, that feature is a throwaway story. It's not a big headline, but there is value and meaning behind it because there are people <laughs> behind that story. So definitely, just keeping that as a constant reminder has been really important for me. Alrighty, thank you all, and thanks for watching. This has been a show with the interns, <laughs> um, just to get their perspectives on media. Thank you. Au revoir. Sweet. Thank Yay. you, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>